And my father was really was an orator, and now we don't talk about orators anymore. But in that era, people enjoyed listening to a really good speaker. And of course, uh, the House and Senate weren't on television or radio, so the word would have to spread. You know, um, Boggs is up, and uh, people would come to the gallery to listen to him because he was a fine speaker. The night before the debate on the Voting Rights Act of 1965, um, we were at home. It was summertime, and um, I had graduated from college the year before and was living at home. And I think my sister was around as well. And we were having um, dinner, and we started needling my father about speaking on the voting rights bill. He was um, whip at the time. And um, we said, you know, you're a leader. You need, to, you need to get up and speak on this. And he kept saying, stop giving me grief. You know, I am going to vote for it. It's going to cost me unshirted difficulty to vote for it uh, because of representing uh, New Orleans and, and neighboring parishes in Louisiana. And, um, and I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to speak for it. That's political suicide. I'm not going to do it. And we just kept at him, and he finally said, just enough. <laughs> and, um, and so we, we finally were quiet. And so we didn't come to Congress the next day because we didn't expect him to speak. But he um, was on the floor and heard a fellow Louisianian uh, get up and give a speech that, saying that there was no discrimination in the state and that uh, blacks could vote uh, in Louisiana as easily as whites. And he just couldn't stand it. Uh, so he got up and, and made really what many people thought was the best speech of his life uh, for voting rights. And, um, and it was quite a moment because, of course, that piece of legislation is really the signal piece of legislation in the whole civil rights movement, uh, having more effect, really, than any other piece of legislation.